Inlay Lake. The magical beauty of this body of water has attracted and fascinated people since time immemorial. Even today, the lake is full of golden mystique and captivating allure. This unique lake is home to the Intas, the sons of the lake, as this Burmese people is also known. The Inta originally moved to Inlay Lake from the south of today's Myanmar. Khan Daing Hotel is an ideal starting point for various excursions on and around the lake. The hotel's accommodation includes a selection of land-based bungalows and also a range of comfortable bungalows situated on water. For those who wish to experience some of the local customs, one of the water bungalows is an absolute must. What could be more beautiful than to be woken up each morning by the rising sun and to witness the natural splendor of the lake from one's very own veranda? Excursions and boat trips can be booked in the hotel. We set off from the hotel lobby and head to a small jetty on the lake. Soon there's something that catches our eye. A fisherman prepares to cast his net. The conical bamboo frame used by the Inta is an unusual looking net. The fishermen detect the presence of fish by the rising bubbles that come from below. But with this type of fishing, it's necessary to have a good deal of skill and also a fair amount of luck. Twenty different species of fish are to be found in Inlay Lake. The most common is a type of carp that weighs in at less than a kilogram. Finding a peaceful section of the lake is quite difficult. Numerous long-tailed boats, the main means of transport for the Inter, relentlessly travel across the lake. It is believed that the Inters settled in the Inlay Lake region in the 18th century in order to escape the wars and constant oppression that they had encountered in the south of the country. Further historical sources indicate that this Burmese tribe settled here as early as the 14th century. The Inters originally built four small settlements here and indeed the word inlay means Lake of the Four. Mm -hmm. 
Now, there are several villages here, a total of 37, with around 100,000 inhabitants. Main Tauk is well known for its traditional market and is popular with both local people and tourists alike. The colourful and lively atmosphere of the water market and its exotic delicacies is a fascinating and rewarding experience. Ever since the Myanmar government opened up its borders, the markets have been full of tempting souvenirs. In recent years, several Padong families have also settled at Inlay Lake. This people has become famous for its long-necked women. These striking, heavy, spiral brass necklaces press the nape of the neck downwards and gradually stretch it. The boats are ready and waiting. The next leg of the journey leads to a far more tranquil section of the lake that features the natural environment. Water lilies cover the surface of the water. The engines of the motorboats fall silent and the local surroundings suddenly come into their own. A few minutes later, another speciality of the Inter appears, floating gardens. These extraordinary creations are important to the local economy. The floating gardens consist of a hundred metre long and around two metre wide carpet of water hyacinths that are densely interwoven. Within the roots of this natural carpet, highly fertile mud gradually forms a layer of soil. This eventually results in a one metre thick layer of floating garden hummus. Flowers, tomatoes, cucumbers and beans are cultivated on Lake Inlay's remarkable floating plantations. Leg rowing is another characteristic of the Inter people. The Inter have fully adapted themselves to life on the water. Built on stilts, their villages are usually located close to their floating farmland. Surrounded by both the Shan and Pao tribes, the small ethnic community of Inter tribesmen have developed a fascinating lifestyle and unique culture. Even though the village of Ke La contains a large variety of splendid buildings, its main feature is located just outside the actual village. The Jumping Cats Monastery of Nga Pe Kong has become well known for the ring jumping tricks performed by its well-trained cats. The 
The monastery is the oldest situated at Lake Inlay and its buildings are of timber construction. It was built in the middle of the 19th century. In addition to its many cats, the Ngape Monastery also possesses a valuable collection of Buddha statues, along with several beautifully crafted altars. The 150 square kilometer Inlay Lake is surrounded by the picturesque Shan Mountains. Close to the lake is the capital of the southern Shan state. There are frequent encounters with the local people as they work on their floating fields. When a fertile layer of soil has formed, the gardens are towed to open water. The floating plantations are then reached by boat. Although this may seem to be a rather laborious procedure, it's actually far more practical than attempting to cultivate the near impenetrable shores of the lake. Iwama is not only the largest village in this region, but it is also one of Inlay Lake's most popular sightseeing attractions. One reason for the increasing popularity of the village is its atmospheric backdrop of wooden houses that are built on wooden stakes. In Iwama, every five days, a floating market takes place that, in recent years, has seen a decline in the sale of locally grown produce. Now souvenirs are given pride of place. Despite this recent development, the village has lost nothing of its original charm. Iwama's many picturesque waterways, bridges and traditional wooden buildings are a wonderful sight. The Shan, who originate from this region, are a constant source of fascination to the visiting tourists. Today, the Shan people are the largest minority in Myanmar and make up 9% of the total population. Yet they have played an important role in the history of Southeast Asia. However, as the stubborn Shan were unable to create a united kingdom, their once great homeland fell into decline and their influence diminished. The imaginative and colourful dances of the Shan are one of the main performing art forms in Southeast Asia. But the historical architecture of the Shan has now vanished forever. Compared to Iwama, the houses of this village are somewhat derelict and many have been abandoned by their former occupants. But it does contain a number of temples. Yeah! 
The village of Tarle has clearly not yet benefited from the growing tourism of this region, as is so in other areas of Inle Lake. The village boasts a 200-year-old wooden monastery that features beautiful Shan altars, and it's well worth a visit. Increasing traffic on the village's canals is a sure indication that Tarle will soon appear on the tourist map. Marionettes and puppets have a long tradition in Myanmar culture. This art form has been in existence since the end of the 13th century. After a short break, the journey continues. Our next destination is a sanctuary that's located around one and a half kilometers south of Nampan, Pang Do U. Even though the pagoda of the royal bark was only built in the 1960s, it's now one of the main shrines, not only on the lake, but in the whole of Myanmar. Hong Do U Monastery is the most important sanctuary on Shan territory. Once a year, a colorful pagoda festival is celebrated here between September and October. Thousands of believers come here on a pilgrimage and take part in the religious celebrations which last for three weeks. Five Buddha figures are situated in the center of the sanctuary. Over the years, these figures have been covered by so much gold that they're now almost unrecognizable as statues. During the Pagoda Festival, the statues are transported on a beautifully decorated boat that for several days visits each of the lake's most important villages. The spectacular Pondo U Pagoda Festival is now one of Burma's most impressive cultural events and attracts a growing number of foreign visitors. At this time, many of the villagers organize boat races on Inlay Lake. The villagers of this region are known for their weaving skills, and this traditional work of the Inter people can be seen at close hand. Another important aspect of the country's economy are the many small Burmese cigar manufacturers who produce the popular cheroot. The traditional working methods of the local weavers has changed little over the centuries. The village of Inpokon is renowned far beyond Myanmar for its high quality silk. Although this village mainly features its weaving skills, as with many of the other settlements around Inlay Lake, it also has a number of metal workers. The skill of the local craftsmen is evident in the country's many small and charming pagodas and Buddhist temples.
The endeavours of the inhabitants of Ing Por Kon has had its rewards as is reflected by many of its buildings. Virtually all of the silk weaving mills are open to the public. The old looms are a reminder of bygone times. Burma is famous for its silk and the various weaving techniques used vary from region to region. Silk clothing was once the exclusive privilege of royalty. Today it's worn during official ceremonies and other special events. A number of the canals outside the village are covered by dense vegetation. These areas are vital breeding grounds for several rare birds. The Inter people have learned to live in harmony with their natural surroundings. However, the motorboat can be something of an intrusion. However, this remarkable lake has a great deal to offer. The reputation of Lake Inle has had a positive impact throughout the region. The village of Indian can be reached by boat and is a popular tourist destination. The market seems to have an abundance of everything including a large variety of exotic food. Business is flourishing. ideal place to get away from daily routine. The geographical location of Indian makes it suitable for livestock farming. The main attraction is located outside the village and attracts the local people as well as Buddhist monks and foreign visitors. After a short walk, we come across the remains of an ancient sanctuary, Along Situ. Here, more recent architecture combines with that of the past. Hundreds of decayed stupas of Shan design are to be found around a kilometer beyond the village. Most of them date back to the 17th century. Various of the stupas surround a magnificent central chidi. It's believed that a saufa had the temple built. The term saufa denotes the title of a royal personage. Up until 1958, the Saufas ruled over their principalities prior to voluntarily abandoning their official titles and responsibilities. However, the great cultural and political influence of the Shan has survived untouched right up to the present day.
There is much evidence to indicate that Indien was once the seat of a Shan Seofa in the 17th century and is therefore more than likely that this royal person was responsible for the creation of this sanctuary. This sacred location, as well as the entire region, seemed to possess a unique and magical energy. Lake Inlay in Myanmar, a unique and natural world, full of warmth and magnificent beauty.